Hello and welcome to Channel Sport this morning. Glad you could join us again. I'm Taya Salah. And I'm Cecilia Omogben because we're starting this morning with what's happening going down in the world of basketball. Talking about right. the MVBF Infest. Yes, that's the focus this morning. Yeah, that's the focus, Anna. Hopefully, um, yeah, one of the main actors uh, will be joining us from our Abuja studios uh, to talk about this particular situation. We're talking about Tijani uh, Omar. Let's move on Absolutely. and talk basketball now on the home front. And it's all about the MBBF, Nigerian Basketball Federation, the leadership on pass, and it's still ongoing. And it doesn't look like there's any solution in sight. Cecilia, yeah, I don't right. know if you have any news for us today. <laughs> no, I don't, I mean, we're just going to get sides of the different views and all that. Right. On Thursday, remember, we, talk, you know, we, uh, we had, uh, you know, the minister. Uh, the minister had a press conference in Lagos and those, for all the things he was saying concerning the fact that, okay, the MBBF crisis is all about you know, uh, externally motivated mm. and all that. Some people didn't compete in the election. You know what? I want to have to say that I'll listen to him and after that, we'll be talking with Tijani Umar. If Tijani wanted to have caused faction in basketball, he should have come and pick form. Today, if you ask him evidence of participation in that election, he has none. How can he construct a faction? Basketball attempted to have a constitution, but the process also fell. Because they went for the Congress to endorse the constitution. And Tijani Umar used Air Force officers and police to send members of the, uh, the Federation, prevented them from entering. Engineer Abu Gumel begged him to allow them to enter. They were only about two or three. So, yes, so if, if you have already constituted your own majority, what would two people, three or two, do? He refused. My representative as a minister appealed to him to allow the three people to enter. He refused. Today, Tijani is talking of government intervention. Those Air Force officers he used to sack members of the Federation were they owned by basketball. It is when he will go and then conduct an election in a farmhouse without NOC, without anybody, with only his friends, and then he will say government is intervening. We have not done anything. If we were to intervene, he has held the monies of the Federation since he left office. Could it have been that we don't know what to do? I have received an official communication from FIBA that they are coming to Nigeria. In, in February, and I'm very happy. The sports minister there and all that, you know, talking about what went down and what he feels is not really the reason. But then, at someone's going to react to this, and Tijani Uma, of course, this fashion president of the Nigerian Basketball Federation, uh, he will be joining us live from our Abuja studio and talk about what the minister said and what he feels about everything that has been going down. This is the first time we're having a live interview on TV because he really doesn't want to talk about it. But we have Tijani Uma this morning. Good morning and welcome to Sport This Morning. Yeah, good morning, Cecilia. Happy New Year to you. <laughs> Same to you, sir. Uh, you heard from the minister, right? Now, what's your reaction to all his allegations and all that? Uh, well, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I have always said that I do not want to join issues with a top public officer uh, in this regard. Uh, therefore, I'm not in this place today to respond to whatever he said. Um, I just want to say that um, it is always difficult for you to establish due process. Uh, every keen follower of sports in Nigeria is very much aware that the so-called elections held, conducted, monitored, and delivered by the sports ministry was a complete charade. And therefore, um, the facts are well documented. They are in the public domain. And it is not within my power to respond to any allegations against me or against my own faction of the Nigeria Basketball Federation. We have led the Federation with a deep sense of responsibility. And we have brought basketball to where in Nigeria. When we started, basketball was absolutely nowhere. Uh, why we were able to stand all this harassment, intimidation, and the attempt to use impunity to take over basketball uh, unconstitutionally is simply because uh, our success and our work, you know, uh, both speak for us. 
and therefore I'm not really interested in responding to anything. If you ask me specific questions about uh, you know, how the elections were conducted, I would be very willing to answer you. But uh, at this point in time, what is so important to me is that if we were doing the wrong thing, FIBA would not be coming to Nigeria. For the International Basketball Federation, the world governing body for the sport of basketball, to send a fact-finding delegation to Nigeria on our insistence and because of our resilience and you know, our great effort to establish due process is a great success for us in itself. I have okay. nothing more to say. Uh, I have so much, along with my colleagues on my side of the Federation, to put before uh, the FIBA delegation. Therefore, I'm not going to preempt anything. Uh, what I will say is that every step we took in establishing our election was valid is in line with the FIBA statutes. It is also in response to a letter uh, written to the Nigeria Olympic Committee by the International Olympic Committee in 2013, warning and advising very clearly that no government organ in charge of sports should conduct any election. They should not issue guidelines. They should not substitute themselves for the federations. The federations are supposed to be in charge of their processes, including elections. This is where we stand, and this is why we are doing what we are doing.